Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we got to talk about the banger of a trailer that came out yesterday for Across the Spider-Verse. Of course, we're talking about Sony's Spider-Man number two, the sequel to the Miles Morales movie we got some years back. And I got to say, that was a really good trailer. That was a really good one. So in this video, we gotta take a look at that trailer, see what happened out there in the market, see what books are moving as a result of the trailer. Of course, we're sort of in this bear market, if you wanna call it that, in comic books. So the FOMO buys coming off of this trailer are nowhere near what they were for other movies, say, at the top of this year or even last year. Uh, but there are some interesting trends that we can kind of talk about and talk about why certain books may have moved and why other books uh, did not move. And most specifically, talk about one of the biggest characters now in comic book collecting, and that, of course, is the Amazing Bagman. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, and let's get into this video here today. All right, so the, of course we have to talk about the trailer that just came out. Now, I'm not going to play the trailer for you guys. You guys should go watch it after this video in case you haven't seen it already. I'm sure you guys have. Uh, but the trailer came out, and it was a really good one. There was a lot uh, to process with it, a lot of Easter eggs, and certainly to the you know the title of the film itself, Across the Spider-Verse, uh, we did see Miles Morales traveling in what looked like through you know many different dimensions and him traveling alongside a lot of other Spider-Verse characters. So there were tons of Easter eggs, all the various Spider-Man costumes you can imagine, uh, all the various sort of like uh, Spider-Verse type of characters uh, are seemingly making appearances in this movie, if not uh, cameos at the least. And for that reason, there was a lot of different movement in the market. But let's first talk about Ultimate Fallout 4, of course, the first appearance of Miles Morales himself. You guys know this book by now. Uh, this is one of the things that I think is interesting, where, you know, coming off of this trailer, obviously he is the titular character of the film itself. And uh, you would think that, you know, of course, uh, people are getting that sort of peak FOMO for Miles Morales when they see this trailer come out, uh, that might have some movement in the market. And certainly it did a little bit. Uh, we saw a few second prints move out here in the market. You can see uh, the one here, uh, Ultimate Fallout uh, number four, second print, uh, where he's sort of unmasking himself on the white cover. Uh, we saw a few of those, those sell. We saw some facsimiles sell. We saw second printings with him uh, having the mask off of his face. And we did get a 9.8 sale as well, actually finishing at auction. So I'm sure the auctioneer was very happy about the timing for that one that did sell at the $1,965 range. Now, $1,965 is nowhere near the all-time best for that book. This is a book that was, you know, over the $3,000 mark uh, back in 2021, but the $1,900 sale is a strong showing, at least in the uh, recent sort of days and months, generally speaking. I mean, the book is basically hovering between $1,700 to, you know, almost pushing that $2,000 price point, you know, 1965 uh, as that last sale is, you know, just about to get it back to that 2K threshold. And as you can see, last two sales before that, the day before were 1800 and 1700 So, you know, that seller got a $150 bump uh, based on the trailer that came out, which isn't too shabby overall. But, you know, as we can see, if I just kind of squ quickly scroll through, you guys can see that the numbers uh, go way, way, way up as I get to earlier in the year where this book was, you know, a $3,300 book. And that's kind of one of the interesting things uh, about, you know, where Ultimate Fallout 4 currently sits. I mean, there's just a lot of options for the book right now. I mean, you, you have the second prints, you have the first prints, you have uh, all these other sort of Miles covers with his, you know, in the preview magazine and things like that. So there's a lot of dispersion in terms of the values of where people want to go when they're putting their money into Miles Morales. And on top of that, you have a lot of the speculation that has already been sort of baked into uh, the idea of this character. Like, you know, Miles Morales in a way is, is sort of like the value of Tesla stock where people are like, it's a great company and it's going to be one of the greatest companies. Therefore, the stock price should be this already. But sort of the value is already kind of baked into the book even more so than the book actually sort of realizing that value, which, you know, maybe later on down, you know, in Miles Morales' career, especially when he completes the trilogy of these movies and maybe he finds his way into the MCU or maybe we get a trilogy of live action stuff, certainly the book can elevate itself to that tier of status, but it feels like we're already pricing it at that point uh, right now, or we were pricing it at that point, you know, in 2021. So it's going to be hard for that book to kind of bounce back, so to speak, to get to those 
those numbers. But it does go to show that there are going to be people who sort of have that kind of feeling of, hey, you know, maybe I should pick up this book. I mean, I myself am somebody who enjoys Miles Morales Spider-Man, but I do not own an Ultimate Fallout 4. And I can see a future where I go watch this movie and all of a sudden I think to myself, you know, that would be pretty cool to own Ultimate Fallout 4. Maybe I should pick up a copy. And I think if you convert enough of those types of swaggle hosses over time, you'll eventually be able to get those floor prices up to the 3K mark eventually. Now, the other character that we have to talk about from the trailer is the hottest character in all of comic books right now. Words for 200 that I never thought I would say on the Swagglehoss channel, but Amazing Spider-Man number 258, first appearance of the Amazing Bagman costume is in fact one of the hottest books in the comic book market today. I suspect in the coming weeks when we get you know lists like Cover Price or Key Collector or Go Collect, we're gonna see a lot of ASM 258 popping up on it. And it's just really, really funny. I mean, certainly uh, the bag man, as you can see right here from the thumbnail, had probably one of the better moments of the trailer. And I think that that's sort of the first kind of uh, thing that we can kind of, kind of take away from the current spec market or the FOMO market. And that is this idea of like, you know, it really is gonna depend and uh, how it is portrayed in the trailer, not just the idea of the character showing up in the trailer, because there were characters that showed up in this trailer that we're gonna talk about later on in the video that didn't seem to move the market in the same way. And that's probably because they didn't get a cool hero moment, so to speak. But the Bagman had a nice little moment. And for that reason, you can see as I just sort of scroll down, how many Bagman costume books have actually sold in these last you know, 24 hours or so. It goes about to right here. So this is definitely gonna be a book showing up on a lot of lists. And, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, if you're somebody out there who wants this book, I mean, it's definitely a cool book. It's a fun one to have. It's certainly everyone's favorite kind of ironic Spider-Man costume. But at the same time, I mean, this is it. This, this has got to be the height for Bagman. I mean, I, I, if Bagman comes out of this movie getting his own cinematic franchise, I will eat a Dark Hawk comic book. Let it be known right here. Swaggle Hoss will eat a Dark Hawk comic book because I do not believe that this character is going to be able to peak much more than this, although it is a very cool book. Now, some of the other winner books that I think are cool to talk about is actually Spectacular Spider-Man number 98. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the first appearance of the character known as Spot. Spot has been established now for quite some time as being the villain of the Across the Spider-Verse film. We kind of learned about this, you know, uh, I'd say maybe almost a year ago, even months ago, that was when the speculation came out. And certainly it's been pointing to Spot all this time. And what's really surprising is that this is actually a book that did see FOMO buys coming off of it, uh, even as recently as yesterday. I mean, you would think that, you know, anyone who sort of wanted to spec on this book or anyone who already wanted to FOMO into this book would have already done so from sort of the previews that we got with the character because we did see images of Spot. But, you know, from this past trailer, we did get quite a few sales for this particular key. And this will be another book that also pops up on a lot of hot lists in the coming weeks or so. Uh, but a lot of sales, you know, raw copies going for that $35 price point. Here's one that went for 50. Uh, here's some slash prices of 30. Uh, here's a low grade for 15. Uh, we got a 9.0 sell for 74. And then we got a couple of uh, CGC sign books that definitely sold for a lot higher than what their grades would normally go for. But that could just be the signature factor where the 9.4 sold for effectively 200. We had a 9.6 sell for you know 210, 220. Uh, so definitely setting personal best for those particular grades. And uh, this is a really interesting book, a very cool book. Spot feels like a character that could come out of this film and really, you know, elevate themselves to another tier of villain uh, in the rogue gallery of, you know, spider characters, especially for that of Miles Morales. You know, Miles Morales is definitely a character that is going to need some iconic villains to sort of elevate himself, uh, particularly I'm thinking about, you know, even current comic books and ongoing comic books. And let's say we come out of this movie and Spot sort of solidifies himself in pop culture. I could see Spot, you know, making his way into a lot of Miles Morales storylines in the future. And not only are we getting spot for this film, but actually some of the producers have made mention that when we get the next movie, of this franchise, which I believe is called Beyond the Spider-Verse, uh, Spot is also going to be one of the main villains for that film as well. So it does feel like, you know, Spot is not necessarily gonna be a quote unquote one and done villain for this particular film, that he's actually going to have more story to tell in the future, which gets me excited about, you know, other books like this, Spectacular Spider-Man number 99. This would be the first cover appearance
appearance of Spot, and then the uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number 100, which is just, you know, I guess this would be the third appearance of Spot in the second cover, but just another cool Spot cover and a satisfying, you know, number 100 book to own for the Spectacular Spider-Man run. So I definitely think that Spot is an interesting villain. That's not me saying that I think that we, sh you know, you should go out and FOMO buy this book right now. There's going to be times, uh, you know, later on, months from now, where people are not going to be excited about this thing and you'll be able to find a cheap copy on eBay. There's definitely going to be times where you'll be out there hunting and you will find cheap copies in your LCS. But just thinking about this book in terms of values and thinking about how it came out in the mid 80s, I mean, this could be a book that, you know, eventually becomes you know, something akin to Uncanny X-Men 221 first Mr. Sinister. Maybe it's going to be a key like that as opposed to sort of a random spec villain character that it was before we got him in the film. All right, let's quickly talk about a couple other winner books, so to speak. Uh, of course, Spider-Man 2099 number one, first appearance of Miguel O'Hara uh, is a book that, you know, sold a, a handful of copies. We did get a 9.8 sale at the uh, $150 range. That's going to kind of rival sort of recent prices for this thing, although it had been on a little bit of a slide overall. If I scroll down here to you know some of the recent sales, you can see that this was one that was dipping under the $100 price point at 99, 100, 103, 128, 103 for the last you know few days or so. So these handful of sales, 150, 150, 130, are definitely you know as a result of the trailer uh, getting people kind of excited once again. Some other interesting books that did pretty well: Spider-Man Mangaverse number one, just another sort of Easter egg of a manga Spider-Man. You have. Uh, Spider-Man India number one, another book with sort of uh, that's been kind of specced on for this particular movie. That one seems to do pretty well. And then there's some books that, you know, didn't do so well or didn't get the kind of FOMO buys you would think. Of course, Amazing Spider-Man number 256. This is the first appearance of the Spider Armor Mark II. Uh, it's basically kind of like a bulletproof armor. This is one that actually had been specced on for Spider-Man number three because the costume looks similar to that of the costume that Doctor Strange gave him. And it's interesting to see that there was no real excitement for this one coming off of the trailer. There's also Marvel Spotlight number 32. Now, there were a handful of sales, but I wouldn't necessarily say that this book kind of lit up the lamp, so to speak. I mean, we did get, you know, five or six or so. Of course, Issa Rae is playing Spider-Woman, but one of the things that was interesting in seeing her character's design in the trailer is that it was a slightly different costume, certainly like a multiverse version of Jessica Drew, rather than kind of the iconic kind of Marvel Spotlight 32 design of the character. And I feel like that's going to, you know, hurt the value values or hurt the FOMO of buying into that book because, you know, people want to see the character that they love on the screen reflect the character that is in the comic book, at least in terms of the costume design. So it'll be interesting to think about if Marvel Spotlight 32 get, continues to get bumps after this, but definitely a book that didn't necessarily blow up in the market. Although it's possible that we'll see some, you know, Spider Woman, uh, you know, books show up on these hot lists. Then of course, Edge of the Spider-Verse number two, uh, first appearance of Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen. Uh, this is a book that did have a pretty big sale here at the 9.4 for the variant, the Greg Land variant, um, selling at that slash price. So let's call it $3,000. That's going to be a pretty decent sale for that book. Uh, but generally speaking, not a lot of FOMO. Amazing Spider-Man number nine, the second appearance of Spider-Gwen, uh, kind of when all these characters meet. Not a lot of FOMO for this book either. Not a lot of FOMO for Spider-Punk. Not a lot of FOMO for one of my favorite books right here, uh, Web of Spider-Man number 100, the first appearance of the spider armor, a costume that we also saw in the trailer, and not a lot of FOMO for, you know, uh, Ben Riley either. We did see a handful of Ben Riley uh, Spider-Man sales, uh, but I think, you know, most of the buyers and most of the speculators that kind of bought into that book uh, definitely got it when we got the leaks of the board game that came out some months ago. So it's kind of interesting to look at, you know, how the trailer affects the spec market, what books have been moving since it came out yesterday, and kind of what trends are we seeing in this current market. I mean, for me, the takeaway is that, you know, it has to sort of be a book that surprises the market. I mean, the speculators, you know, everyone out there, it, people have thought really hard about this stuff. So anything that could have had any spec that was obvious uh, in the last, you know, couple years has already been sort of priced in. I mean, that FOMO has already been exhausted. So really, it's now characters like Amazing Bagman that randomly shows up in a trailer and has a very cool moment. That's the other thing too. It has to have a cool moment in the trailer. Those are the ones that are getting the FOMO buy. So what does that mean if you're somebody out there who wants to speculate on characters in the future or cash in on trailers? Well, you're gonna have to hit those back bins. You're gonna have to stack those random characters like Darkhawk, and then you're gonna have to hope that randomly you will get an appearance of Bagman 
in an Across the Spider-Verse trailer. Anyways, that's all for this video. That was me kind of going over the market. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the trailer? Did you guys pick up any of these books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next one.